what you end up with is a, a like a thin yogurt. So if you like yogurt, then you're gonna be fine with this. Hello friends, today we are going to make a nutritious, healthy drink. Also can be an ingredient that you can use. All it takes is a good quality milk and some little a mystery ingredient. So thanks for joining me today. And if you'll stay tuned, we will make this easy peasy to make healthy drink. What I'm gonna show you how to make today is so super easy. Uh, you do have to have one special ingredient, which I will tell you about but um, you need a good quality milk. Um, you need one that if you can get a, um, this happens to be, if you're local, this happens to be Buckeye Country Creamery Cream Top Whole Milk A2A2 uh, A2 Milk. On a side note, if you've never heard of A2A2 A2 Milk, it says it right here, A2A2 A2 Milk comes from cows that have a specific, more digestible protein. So. Um, the cows, it's determined by um, uh, blood test on the cows. Many people who experience discomfort or get ill from regular milk can drink A2A2 without any negative side effects. And I have heard of that uh, being true with people. So, A2A2 milk is more desirable. And, um, you know, so just put that in your back pocket of knowledge that you just, if you didn't already know that. But anyway, uh, if you can get a low pasteurized or a vat pasteurized milk or raw milk would be even better. Um, also, I like, um, if you're local, I like Hartzler's milk. Um, but those two, and I think there's another one, I can't remember the name of it, but just, just look for one that is going to say um, low temperature, vat pasteurized. You could try um, this with regular run-of-the-mill milk, but I never have, and I've heard a lady say that it didn't work too well for her, so. So we're making kefir, and I've always, uh, from, I'm from the South originally, up until two years ago. We now live in Ohio, and I've always called it kefir. I did have a friend in Tennessee who called it um, kefir, kefir, that's what she called it. And then I met a lady the other day that called it kefir, or something. But anyway, it's K-E-F-I-R, and it is from the old country, as they say. So, uh, it is a way to preserve milk, cultured milk, basically. So, now you're going to need also these grains. These are kefir grains. I just bought these from a lady the other day, but all the ones I've ever had before, I got one little bit of them from one lady, and these things multiply like rabbits, I'm telling you. I mean overnight so you will have enough to give away to your friends or to sell if you want to do that uh, the lady I got these from got them from Etsy so you might just research a key for grains or if you have a resource community ask around it resembles tapioca is what it resembles so if you're familiar with that it resembles tapioca pearls and it's a yeast product I'm no scientist don't pretend to be don't want to be but that's what it is. They are grains, not like a wheat grain, but grains as in a small amount of. I have heard of people making water kefir. I don't know how to do that, but you have to have a particular kind of grain. I do know that. Not grain. I'm using that word. A particular type of starter, if you will. This is your starter um, for water grains. Uh, water kefir. So um, if you're familiar with water kefir, if you've made it, um, let me know in the comments below. I know a lot of people think or know they can't digest milk very well, so they have what make water kefir. I've had friends who do, but again, if you'll look for that A2A2 milk or start researching that. I'm not going to fill it all the way just because uh, it's going to thicken. And I'm also not putting, making it in this plastic jug for more than one reason. Primarily because it's going to be, I just... I just like it in the jars better. I feel like it's more manageable. You're gonna be able to um, get it out easier. I just, lots of reasons. I don't have 
a measurement on this because I am not a die-hard measurement person. <laughs> so I, I've got this little cup of um, of, of uh, starter, little beads, if you will, look like tapioca, and I'm simply going to put some in each one. I'm going to put about a teaspoon in the quartz. And I'm sure there's people who are die-hard kefir makers and they go by measurements and stuff, but that's not me. When you follow me in my kitchen, you're gonna learn how to, the, uh, you're gonna learn, I'm gonna use all this. You're going to learn more of being able to do it without something written in front of you, whatever it is, cook a uh, recipe, using leftovers, you know, I want you to learn how to cook without something written down. Just, just intuitively. Okay, so I put approximately, I'd probably call it a couple of teaspoons in here, and I might have put a tablespoon in here. You saw me guesstimate. That is it. You saw me stir it up. I'm going to cover it with, um, this, these are unfiltered, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, unbleached coffee filters. And these are just little non-PBA plastic rings that I uh, have. And tomorrow we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna let it sit here probably, I don't know, it's roughly gonna be 24 hours, so I'll let you know. But we're gonna let it sit here and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how uh, the result and then what you can do with this. It does sit out on the counter overnight. You can find kefir in stores. Um, I know Aldi has it inexpensively, but I just took these snapshots from the Walmart website. And you can see here the benefits, health benefits of drinking kefir. But it's much, much cheaper to make it at home, of course. We are back about 24 hours later, um, about 22 probably. What happens with this starter? It is a, is a symbiotic relationship between a yeast and bacteria. I'm no scientist, but they live together happily and when they are added to a good quality milk, then the, um, over the 24 hour period, the grains um, eat the sugar, the lactose in the milk and it actually produces more lactic acid. And this is actually better for people who are lactose intolerant. I am not a doctor, dietary person, nutritionist, none of those. I'm just somebody who's been a mother th for 30 years and a wife for 33 years. And I've just read and, and just studied and just eaten all this kind of information up for over 40 years. So that is all I am. <laughs> So, you know, if you try this and you're lactose intolerant and you get sick to your stomach, don't blame me, please. Do your own research. But I will say that ideally or theoretically, um, this is the, the process of making kefir is uh, makes the milk more digestible for everybody and especially for those who are lactose intolerant. Also, when you're using that A2, A2 milk, that adds another level to those, um, to benefit for those who are lactose intolerant. Okay, well, the, the web, the website, the internet is full of information. I will say, I have believed this for forever, that it's more important to have physical books, reference books and that kind of thing, even a notebook. I've got a home notebook, two or three of them, of just newspaper clippings and magazine articles and that kind of thing. So that's so important to keep that. Um, did I turn the, is the camera on? I'm sure hope it's on. Okay. It's on. Ooh, it scared me a minute. It's so important in my opinion to have hard copies of things. Now, you never know when you're not gonna have the internet, but I have believed that for forever. So get some books, do your research, print out some information, web pages. But here's the thing, I don't just trust one or two sources. Don't just trust me. 
seek out your um, uh, seek out some other sources, some other information, and just make your own decisions from there. So if you can see, it looks like a um, like a cottage cheese, like a now that is the good cream that came from the milk itself. Oh mercy, that's gonna be so good. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour, we'll talk about making sour cream and cottage cheese another day, but I'm gonna pour this in here so that hopefully you can see this okay. It might fall, probably will. But the grains that we used yesterday, you remember how many I had? They multiplied. I'm just stirring it so that I can get it poured out better because I'm gonna have to hold this. I'm gonna have to hold this. Now, I have friends who actually have eaten the grains. Shout out to Sis and Kadesh Farm Homestead. Excuse me. Um, I think she said they've eaten the grains, I believe. But, you know, I think your chickens might like them. But you don't want to get rid of the grains. I mean, they are reusable again and again and again. But, so you're, you're coming. What you end up with is a, a like a thin yogurt. So if you like yogurt, then you're gonna be fine with this. If you think you don't care for this, try it. But also, you know, you could put a little honey, you could puree some berries, um, strawberries or blueberries. You could um, use this as a base for, honestly, you could use it as a base for anything that you would use um, like buttermilk. Now that's, you know, you could use it as a base for smoothies. Oh, I'm making it too full. You could use it as a base. I got it too full. Like I said, for smoothies or muffins or breads. So you've got like a, the colonies there. Don't know how to describe it other than tapioca or cottage cheese. But this is going to take a little bit of time, especially since my colander is so, or my sieve here, my, my strainer, rather, is so tiny. It's going to take a little while. In fact, it might not even, I might have to go with my stainless. This is the thickest kefir I think I've ever made. <laughs> it's going to take a few minutes to just get this strained in here. And then you would store this in the fridge after the fact and uh, just drink it cold within, I don't know, a week or so. But just one way you can be healthier, have a healthier gut, and a healthier gut is, creates folks who live, creates happier folks, and that's what you're trying to create with your cozy homemaking and old fashioned family values. We're going to see how Jay reacts to kefir. I think he likes it. Now, a lot of this is the cream as well, you know, because we had that cream. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to just set this over here to the side, and I'm going to explain. So the same thing, you know. And all these, I mean, I'm just, I'm just in love. Look at this. My counter's clean, by the way. Everything's clean, sanitized. Look at that. Oh my, I'm so thrilled. All right, we'll come back to that. I'll strain that a little bit. All right, I have this jar and I have it different on purpose so that I'll know in the refrigerator what it is. You could use any kind of a glass jar. But what I'm gonna do is not make any more kefir right now, but I just want to keep it alive and help, happy. So what I'm probably going to do, just for tonight at least, because this is something that's pretty much an ongoing process. If you don't, um, you know, have a lot of people in your family or you're not using the kefir for all kinds of reasons, then you can freeze the grains. I've done that successfully. But just for now, because I'll probably make kefir in the next few days, I will just keep them alive in here put them in this jar, grains after they've strained here, and put them in the jar with just some more good, you know, quality milk. There's so many things I could talk to you about kefir. So 
so that we're not here all day, y'all can just ask questions or I can do a follow-up video. I can do something else later um, that answers the questions if we have a lot of interest to demonstrate. Once all this is strained, see, I'll put the, I'll put the grains in here. I'll empty out the colander and then I will cover them with milk and we'll be good to go um, next time I need them. I'll just take them out and put them in milk like you saw me do at the beginning of the video. Now, our children love kefir. You know, Mr. Patient does. I'm just going to show you. See, it actually, it's not through straining yet, but I mean, it's it looks like milk. You could leave it in there probably one more day and it'd be a little bit thicker. See, it's it's not as thick as as some time, some kefir is, but at the same time, it's not as thin as milk either. So I'm just gonna taste it. Oh, it's good. I I like it. So a little bit bitter, but uh, not um, not bitter, but sour. But that's not a bad thing. If you pay attention to health at all, you're gonna know that sour. All the tastes are good for you. I, I'm telling you, I could talk to you about this quite a while, but. I won't do that today. Can you see me pouring that in there? Thicker, thinner than yogurt, but not exactly milk either. So thanks for joining me. And if you have a topic that you'd like to learn about that I might can help with, tell you about, drop that in the information down below in the comments and we'll, we'll do that. Count your blessings, y'all. I count a good, happy gut. Gut health is one of my blessings.